What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Tuesday, February 27th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, Energy Secretary Granholm explains the clean energy battle. Ooh, that one should be good. Next up, First Solar could have $5 billion impact on U.S. economy by 2026. But at what cost? Is there a formula for printed money, cost, and subsidies? Stu at, likes to add himself a little bit of uh, uh, extra to the title. We love that. Next Me? up, Saudi Arabia can <laughs> no longer raise oil output for cash. And then finally, huge oil slick from cargo ship hit by who these trigger environmental disaster concerns. That will end the new segment. Stu will then toss it over to me. I'll quickly cover what's going on in the oil and gas markets. Mainly, we did see a nice little pop of oil um, towards the, the middle of the day on the training session, mainly due to, to some Houthis and geopolitical news. And then we will cover a very interesting article that dropped via the Wall Street Journal that we're just running on Newsbeat right now, mainly to do with Exxon and, Chi and Chinook, which is China's oil and uh, national oil and gas company, protesting Chevron and Hess's thirty a uh, fifty eight billion dollar or fifty three billion dollar M and A deal over the Guyana. So not only is uh, is Venezuela moving troops to the border, but now Exxon might be moving. They're moving lawyers into the courtroom. So very interesting little quirk that we'll discover, um, and then we will let you guys get out of here and get back to work. As always, I'm Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Go ahead and kick us off. All right, man. Hey, get ready to rumble here. Uh, let's start with our buddies over there with uh, Miss Granholm. How fun is this? Energy Secretary Granholm explains the clean energy battle. Really? Okay, I really went out on a limb on that one. That was a good pun. Mm -hmm. um, when you sit back and take a look, she joined the Yahoo fi uh, finance team on this article. I didn't put the, the video in there, mm -hmm. but it, it was pretty interesting because her they, they provided the transcript for this. She says, I'm in, this is her quote, I, I'm in a construction site right now that is with Group 14 who are building an ad, a node factory for silicon batteries for electric vehicles. China, as you noticed, they control about 90% of the supply chain for battery electric vehicles and critical minerals. Mm -hmm. What is this company doing? And this is help from the bipartisan infrastructure bill. <laughs> That's great. Has, she, has anybody told her that ever since her uh, disastrous uh, episode. You remember when we had her uh, try to do a three day cruise? Uh, they went out for a three hour cruise and they mm -hmm. couldn't even get across a couple states. Has anybody told her that all this EV stuff is having some serious problems? Yeah, no, no kidding. It's, it, it's the, the, the title, I think, says it all. I, I mean, she, she ain't explaining much. No, she's not. And here's where is another great quote. Yeah, that's exactly the pres why the president's agenda is so well thought through. <laughs> <laughs> I have never seen such bad energy policies on anything. Anyway, yeah. It's got some great quotes in there. Let's go to First Solar here. First Solar could have $5 billion impact on the U.S. economy, but at what cost? Is there a formula for printed money cost and subsidies? You know, Michael, when I, I actually sat through my MBA test a bazillion years ago, they had just come out with the formula of future value of money. And, and so I want to add a kind of like CapEx, uh, and then there's, um, uh, you know, when you take a look at non-GAAP uh, reporting accounting. methods, accounting, I want to add some more accounting to this and kind of like add something in there and say future value of printed money. You know, let's add the, instead of just future value of money, let's go, what is the amount of money, the inflation or the porculus bill is adding to the debt and the interest rate. So Tammy Nemeth, uh, one of our great podcasters, uh, put this out there. Uh, they pay First Solar commissioned an economic analysis of the integrated solar's first value chain mm -hmm. in everything that they were doing. They paid for it. 
you might as well put it out as a marketing fluff piece. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, I'm going to put, I'm going to pay for a study. Anyway, I thought that was pretty funny. Nope. It's good. Uh, All right. I I think, I think the, the, the hard part, well, we love Tammy. Um, she's a great friend of the show. She's been on the podcast a few times. So we do, we do love Tammy. Oh yeah, absolutely. And she's on the energy realities. Yep. Uh, so, you know, Tammy Nemeth is a uh, rock star. She's half in Canada and half in the UK. Let's go over to Saudi Arabia. Can, uh, Saudi Arabia can no longer raise oil output for cash. This one I stole from Irina Slav. It's kind of like we had an old folks day here hanging around. Uh, Saudi Arabia has been spending heavily both abroad and at home. But as she points out, also they're, they are spending a trillion dollars in, mm-hmm. in clean energy, supposedly, which uh-huh. you, you and I both know that's kind of a misnomer. Yeah. Um, but the Sovereign Wealth Fund has now got some issues. And mm-hmm. there's a quote in here that you got to really uh, like and says, uh, don't let a good crisis go to waste. We all know what that one is. Yep. There's going to be a pricing thing that she talks about in here. Um, these plans would really need big money if they stand a chance to ma- ma- materialize and the kingdom is ready to go to great lengths to make all of their plans. Mm-hmm. Now, they're basically saying they've got the reserves. They're not putting in the CapEx uh, in order to pull those reserves out. And there's about 16 other articles I've been reading all over the, the place of a massive amount of um, just general dollars that are needed uh, in order just to meet decline curves. At one time, it was $4 trillion. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty funny that Saudi Aramco, the world's largest oil corporation, says that, they at these prices can't drill. And what does that tell you about American projects? What does it tell you about the capex that's being spent in America right now? And not to be a Debbie Downer, but if you can't find profitable projects in Iran, in Saudi Arabia to drill, I mean, what are, what are we doing well, here? See, there, there's a little bit of difference. If I was if I was holding back, and maybe I didn't explain it quite as well. But if I was sitting there looking at Saudi Aramco, you got a heck of a uh, reserve sitting there. Why do you, a known reserve? There is no wildcatting when you walk out to the, mm-hmm. the desert and go, I need me some oil and get a spoon and dig it up. There's no wildcatting going on. So why would you even wait and have extra production come online until the price goes up? So... Now, they have got themselves in a bind with lower prices because they took the high road with OPEC and cut theirs uh, as the primary uh, cuts going on. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, all right. Wasn't that fun? No, it's I I just I'm I'm sitting here just reading this article. It, 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 you know, what? It always seems like the CFO. That's where these quotes are coming from. It always seems like the CFO is the Debbie Downer because last week, it, I love the article, Aramco issued a grim warning about the state of global oil production capacity. Of course, that's coming from the finance guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but he's, his office is right next to the IR guy. Now, yeah. um, so <laughs> he could be the CFO of the week, man. <laughs> what he do you could. think? He could. Yeah. All right, let's go to the huge oil slick from yep. cargo ship hit by the hooties and the blowfish triggers and environmental disaster concerns. You know, th- this is really bad. Not only was it a rocket, but I can guarantee you that it was a Belize flag UK owned bulk carrier leaking oil. This could have been a dark fleet uh, ship that is so old and nasty uh, tanker that they're using out there all over the place that you get a t- you need a tetanus shot from just looking at it so you know this one is at least a bulk carrier there yeah. is a picture in there um miss producer if you could bring that in it's the cargo ship uh ruby mayar carrying ukrainian grain oops we need you know there there's a lot of that on there uh that they need i i don't get it um 
Well, yeah. it's it's and this it's part of why, you know, I mean, if there's I mean, you you look in this article, Stu, it says the US Central Command is starting to comment on this. That's not a oh, good yeah. sign. When the no. US Central Command when you do something and the response has to come from the spokesperson at US CENTCOM, stand back. Well, I, I'm going to, no. CENTCOM, uh, the Biden administration they're does not. They're firing up the jets. They're ready to go. They're ready to go. But I guarantee you the Biden administration has no idea what to do. Probably not. But again, no. I think this rolls really well into, I think, the the, the oil price um, kind of action that we saw today. Um, so we'll go ahead and I think we'll go ahead and jump over to finance. Before we do that, we'll go ahead and pay the bills here, guys. As always, the news and analysis you just heard is brought to you by the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. The team do a tremendous job making sure it stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy business, hit that description below for all of the timestamps, link to the articles, find Stu and I on LinkedIn, um, check us us. Check us out at dashboard.energynewsbeat.com, our data news combo product. Um, we're going to be we're rolling out some really interesting stuff for Newsbeat here very quickly. We've got some really cool stuff um, that, that we're trying to work on, so we appreciate the support there. As always, leave a review, like, subscribe, energynewsbeat.com. You know, what we saw in the overall markets today, S&P 500 lags a little bit. There's some interesting stuff going on with Google reports out that uh, they may be looking at massive executive shifts, even all the way up to the CEO position, which would be kind of crazy considering what Sundar Pichai has overseen in terms of just a stock price increase um, over the last five years. But nonetheless, that kind of buoyed markets in a little bit of a tentative way with Google eating up so much of that S&P 500. We saw about three quarters of a percentage point drop. NASDAQ stays fairly flat about two tenths uh two tenths of a percentage point uh we did see two-year yields rise while 10-year yields stayed fairly flat bitcoin now fifty four thousand five hundred and eighty dollars as it continues um to push on northward it's kind of funny last time we were at sixty thousand Stu, nobody everyone was freaking out now no one's talking about bitcoin and we're already up to fifty five thousand which is which is really interesting miners seeming to come in um and having themselves a heyday. We did see crude oil pop a little bit today, 77.64, as it currently trades at about 5.35 uh, Central Standard Time as we record this on the 26th. And, and mainly that dollar increase was, was, was a lot due to, you know, uh, there's some sanctions going on. We heard the dis shipping disruptions and this huge oil slick that's coming from um, the, the the Houthis attack. You know, mainly that that is is, is going to put a bad sentiment on future uh, supply availability, which with demand and supply tracking fairly closely, it's it's going to continue. Uh, any any drop in supply is going to cause the market to burp a little bit. I think that's what we saw. Um, John Kilcliffe, we love him over at Again Capital LLC. You know, he said the market's watching the diesel, and that's mainly because there was some uh, European diesel demand is going to fairly track what's going on um, with the availability of crude oil, specifically coming out of the Red Sea. You know, we did see that U.S. diesel um, crack spread surge to a four-month high of about forty-eight dollars a barrel, which is, Ooh. you know, I mean that's just. You know, it, it makes it really difficult then to get that diesel overseas. Um, and again, that attack. And, and don't is, forget, Michael, they use a lot more diesel. Yeah, absolutely. It's everything's a little bit more diesel based over there, which is ironically a cleaner burning fuel relative to relative to um, um, natural gas um, or not natural gas, but gasoline specifically. Ethanol. Um, Ethanol. Well, yeah, we could we could talk for hours about ethanol. A little bit of a scam. Um, the only other thing I saw today, Stu, and this was pretty What's big. So this originally broke in the Wall Street Journal about probably an hour and a half before we broke here. Chevron's fifty-three billion dollar deal for Hess is in jeopardy on possible Exxon challenge. This is a uh. spicy one, Stu. Okay, so remember, about four months ago, three months ago, Chevron dips its toe into the M&A game um, and goes ahead and buys Hess. Where does Hess operate? Hess operates primarily in two areas. You, they've got a large Bakken position up in North Dakota, and they have a 30% stake in the Starbuck block 
in the Guyana offshore field. Ooh, we heard a lot about Guyana. We've heard a lot about Guyana specifically yep. with what's going on with Venezuela. Uh, their 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 uh, El Presidente Madro's got the uh, the Venezuelan seals at the border ready to go. They're objecting and saying that they have territorial rights to the water, but. Now a new war is brewing inside the legal and land rooms over at Exxon Mobil, Chevron, wow. and uh, and Chinook, which is uh, uh, the Chinese National Oil and Gas Development Company. Chevron went ahead today and released in a regulatory filing that uh, that Exxon and Chinook claim to have a right to counter Chevron's offer for Hess's stake in the Guyana project, which Exxon is the primary operator of and is really one of the largest oil finds in years. Chevron warned investors that it, quote, may not complete its purchase of Hess within the time frame the company anticipates at all. Again, much of the value of that $53 billion all stock transaction of Hess was attributed to their 30% stake in the Starbuck block off Guyanese waters. It's absolutely incredible. The dispute really boils down to the terms of the joint operating agreement, which were signed a, a, you know more than 10 years ago. It's not good. You sign it, not not good, but you know, you know, sometimes these these JOAs, they don't age like fine wines, do they age like sour grapes because this yeah. is coming around to bite them in the back. Basically, what this J their the Exxon is claiming that this JOA allows for existing partners like Exxon to participate in ownership changes and preempt an offer for an ownership stake in accordance with a first right of refusal, which means if someone's going to come in and purchase, Exxon and Chinook have a first right of refusal to either match that price or move on. Exxon says it was never exercised its first right of refusal, and if they can't come to an agreement within arbitration, this deal may fail to close. Super interesting, Stu, and it... And it well, and the story only gets leaked if, and so now we know where Chevron's priorities are. Chevron's priorities was getting an increased stake in the Guyana field, and they were right. going to turn around and most likely sell their Bakken stuff. I mean, I could have told, I could have maybe right. guessed that, but this now confirms the sentiment that they were only interested in what was going on in Guyana. They couldn't care less about Hess's position in the Bakken and probably would have sold it off to somebody maybe maybe the new court energy would come in and buy it or you know some other action that's yep. going on up there so extremely interesting from that standpoint and it now gets into it, it becomes a game of lawyers and what does this joa say it'd be fascinating to get our hands on it and be able to read that but you know, th this could take a while again especially if this is expected to produce a million barrels of oil a day within the coming years that's not going to you know, that's not going to come for free. So it's going to be, again, oh, no. it's going to be extremely interesting to see what happens. But Chevron's stock actually took a little bit of a tumble today, dropping over four percentage points uh, after this was released. So not, wow. you know, not, not good. No. And, and when you take a look at the importance of Guyana, um, there is so much going on around in that area that it, it is just nuts. Um it would be nice if they could renegotiate for the African folks. Yeah, it, it would. Um, but Hey, um, you know, I'll now, keep my you're, you're fight, you're fighting the battle on all fronts now, both on the ground and in the, and, and, and in the, and in the legal court. So absolutely yeah. unbelievable. What else you got, Stu? I'm, I'm about done for the day. Oh no. Uh, Hey, you know, I, you just, when you sit back and kind of think, uh, it's not going to get any weirder. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps getting weirder. Trust me. Holy smokes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, all right. We'll go ahead. And with that guys, we'll let you get out of here. Start your Tuesday. We appreciate everybody checking us out. World's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com. For Stuart Turley, I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Thank <laughs> you.